All right, now joining me, one of my very best friends, a guy that's lived many CFL lives, from a fan of the CFL, to a player in the CFL, to a strength coach in the CFL. And now he runs Peers Elite Performance, Pep Nation, known to many people, hundreds of thousands of people in this community trying to get Pep fast, the godfather of my daughter, Layla, and his peers know him as the man, the myth, the miracle, Shay Pierre. What up, my boy? What's up, Natalia J, man? I need some excitement in that voice, man. I need you to stand up one more time. I need you to show me some more love, man. <laughs> hey, let, me do, hey, let me do this for you, man. So I want to give Natay the intro of a lifetime. We're in the mm -hmm. All Ball, Ball podcast, the number one podcast that I'm, man, this is one of the only podcasts that I'm even going to do. Okay, <laughs> this guy right here is the man, the myth, the miracle, the dream, the legend, the enforced the assassin, all the way from Mississauga, Ontario, Canada, by way of St. Joseph Secondary School, Edmonton Eskimos, Toronto Argonauts, Natay and Jay, baby. We're on here. All Woo! Okay, let's go. Bro, that is the legendary energy you bring to every one of your videos, every one of your sessions. I have to ask you, bro, where does that legendary energy come from? It comes up, it comes from, staying up all night, 24 hours a day, eight days a week, and you just gotta live it, breathe it, embrace it, the grind, the hustle, everything comes from that. If you don't got that, if you don't got that work, that passion, the excitement's not gonna be there. I do what I do, because I love it. And that's why I'm so damn excited every day. And I'm excited to be on this podcast. <laughs> oh man, I appreciate that. Uh, honestly though, like, how many coffees did you drink this morning uh, before this podcast? Literally, like, cause you got your energy. I can feel you through the mic. I can, I can feel you. I, I don't just hear you, man. I feel you. Zero coffees and my heart's beating a thousand <laughs> beats a minute. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I, I think it's just, I was born with it, man. Born with yeah. it. Yeah. I've given it. Honestly, you were born with it. And every, like, I've known you forever. And this is, it was, it was kind of weird doing this questioning for this podcast because every question I kind of put out there, I was able to answer in my head. But for the sake of the podcast, like I'm going to ask you stuff and you're going to be like, yo, Tate, you probably already know this, man. But just let the people know exactly because they don't know you hey, like I know people, you. The spectators around the world, they want to know, man. They, they want to know, that's know you, That's why man. they're listening. That's exactly. And honestly, you're doing me a huge favor because the people, I've gotten so many recommendations, people writing in. Tell me, yo, when are you gonna have that uh, Pep Nation on? Pep Nation, I need to hear from Pep Nation. So I'm so sad you decided to do you When you call me and offer me $1,000, of course you're gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you want, man. Like, you, know, you, gotta, you gotta come with the right amount of bread. Right? <laughs> Especially in this day and age, man, you gotta, yeah, you gotta come you with the bread. A little bit, uh, you know, we need a little bit more cash in there. When you came calling, I said, damn it, man. I, I know I'm gonna jump on this one. <laughs> Man, all right, so bro, like we talked about, I've known you for a while, bro. But like, tell me, tell me where your love of sports and just you know athletics and co competing, where where does that where does that come from? Man, well, you know this, man. We've been competing in football for years, and and I love competing. I love the atmosphere. I love the culture. I love the camaraderie. I love everything about sports. And you know, and it's just embedded in me now, and I can't get out of it. I try to get out of it every day. I can't because <laughs> I just can't, I, I keep coming back. It's the it's the young athletes, you know, high school, college, professional. There's so many people out there that throughout the generations that it's just gonna keep me embedded in the sports, no matter what sport it is. Because I just love training. I love seeing athletes get better, enhance their game, and take that game to the next level. Right. So, how did tell me how Pep started? How, where you got the idea from, the inspiration behind it. Because right now you've got over like 400,000 followers in, in, in Pep Nation and like it's continuing to grow week after week, year after year. But where did that inspiration for, for Pep start? Because, you know, honestly, when I, I have to say, like when we were started playing football, you would always be talking about how to get faster, how to get stronger. You know, you, I remember one time specifically after practice, I could say, you know, in, in five, six years, you know, we're gonna be six feet, 200 pounds, running four threes, you know, and I have the plan to get us there. So like, where does that drive and, 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 and for Pep and training people and, you know, the ambition to you know, grow your business, where did that start? You know, it's funny, cause I actually remember that conversation, like it was yesterday. I remember after practice, I said, yo, <laughs> Man, I know exactly how to get to six foot three, 220 yeah. pounds, and run a four three. We're going to be just like, I remember Braylon Edwards. Yeah, he was <laughs> the prototype. 
2003, right? Yeah. And, uh, unfortunately, my genetics didn't help me, but <laughs> I did. I do love the passion and the science and the understanding of how I could take my game to that next level. And I've just been immersed in it ever since, you know, those conversations, those days, because I used to, you know, obviously we had one of the greatest football programs, teams in Canada. And, yeah. and I literally, we grew up with some of the best athletes we know still playing in the CFL today. That Mississauga Warriors team, 2000, yeah. you know, 7, 2008, we were back-to-back -back champs. You know, we got, you know, 14, 15, 20 guys in the CFL from that team. So we were just a very competitive team. So I literally, every day, even before practice, I was saying, yo, I got to go against Natea J today. How, what do I need to do this summer to enhance my game, get bigger, get faster, so this guy doesn't embarrass me every single practice? You know what I mean? Like, and, yeah. and, I, and I was so competitive. I was literally trying everything I could to, to figure out how to master my game to get better for you guys. And yeah. so it started off then, I wanted to get better because you, the guys I was competing against were so good. And that's what allowed me to get to the CFL because of guys like you. And so yeah, I was constantly researching, right? Through, you know, PDFs, uh, books, YouTube, you know, peer reviewed journal articles, finding mentors, people that can help me get that edge. And then finally went to university, you know, um, started working with more athletes after, made the pro league, you know, just, just you know, immersed myself into this culture. And that's where Pep Nation came in because it's a culture that is always looking to win, always looking for to get better. And that's our growth to success. And that's what I want to get people to do is, you know, find a culture that wants to help you get better. And that's what Pep Nation is all about. Yo, that's honestly, that's inspiring for sure. But I have to share this funny story from when we were, you said we play together. So Shay was always one of the, the better athletes and always striving to get better, Had always had that mama mentality. And he took it so far to the point where, you know, you know how we'd always run suicides after practice. And, uh, and Shay has yeah, asthma, yeah. if you don't know. Still one of the greatest athletes the Miss Saga Warriors has ever known. And, but this guy had asthma. So it's time for suicides. And Shay, I don't know what his, his goal, you can talk about this, Shay, but I don't know what his goal or motive was. But before we run suicides, this guy would go grab his puffer and he'd make the loudest <laughs> So everybody could understand that he was taking, a, a, you know, a puff of his puffer, you know, to, to, for everybody to know that he had asthma. But after he'd do that, he would go on to lap every single person more than once in our suicides. And honestly, I wasn't slow shape and I, was, I considered myself one of the better athletes. And to see you lapping me right after you took, you know, your inhaler and, 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 you know, obviously took that in and I'm thinking there's no way this guy with asthma is going to beat me, but you did it day in and day out. And in my head, I'm like, what is going on? This guy is on another level, man. Yo, it's, it's all about playing mind games, man. And, and that's what I love to do, especially back then, because I know, yo, and the might got two catches on me, you know, this guy, you know, I couldn't make a tap. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get these guys back in the, at the end of the session. I'm going to say, you know what? I'm going to challenge you right now at something that I know that, first of all, you ain't good at. And I'm going to push you to the limits uh -huh. to make you, you better. So I would pull out that puffer, you know, make sure everybody <laughs> see me taking this puffer. And I would, and, and you know me, we do these gassers and I leave my equipment on. I leave my helmet yes, on everything. and everybody else would take them off. So I was like, yo, I'm going to freaking lap you and I'm going to make you feel bad about it. Man, I, I'm going to run by you and I'm going to mock you. And I, and, and I just love that because I love getting under people's skin. I love <laughs> talking shit. And I love at the end of practice, I can say, yo, I worked harder than you. There's yeah, one yeah. thing in life, and you know this, is that when uh, another man can't say nothing to you, when you mm -hmm. go to him and you're like, yo, I work harder than you. I, I push harder than you, nothing you can do. And I get the results and that's why, right? So nobody can talk shit. Right? If you're always trying to out push them, out perform them, you know, out game play them, whatever it is. And I just wanted to, I wanted the edge, no matter where it was. And yeah, you know me, like I come pick you up and I freaking drive off. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> and we got stories about that, but I wanted the edge and I still want the edge. Yeah, no, <laughs> we could go back to that story because honestly, <laughs> it makes me laugh every single time. Okay, so Shay, uh, type A personality. Uh, you can tell by this interview that this guy's type A, you know, on time for everything, has to have everything structured, wants to be at the field at a certain time so he can get his regiment in. <coughs> so he picked me up for practice, training, whatever, um, and tell me, okay, t t I'm, I'm 10 minutes away or whatever. 
And you know, first couple of times I'm late. So Shay's like, okay, I gotta, I gotta do something else. He's telling me uh, when he's at his house that he's at my door, which makes me rush downstairs uh, and it works. I'm on time for, you know, maybe a couple of days and I start figuring out, okay, maybe I, he tells me he's there. I got a couple of more minutes to spare. So I'm obviously a little bit more later, late than he would like. And then uh, one day he's had enough. He decides he's had enough. He waits to like get downstairs uh, when he's picking me up and, and, and zooms off and I have to get on my horse and try to catch up to him. Uh, but at that point, his point was made that like, don't mess with his timing, don't mess with his you know, routine. And uh, it was just funny because I was obviously not a type A um, and I could get to the field and, you know, whatever, do whatever I had to do, but I'd, I'd still get the results. So I never, you know, found it that beneficial to be, you know, you know, on the ball all the time. But Shay was completely different. That's why we were probably best friends because we were two complete opposite guys. <laughs> this guy is sugar coated just a little bit, okay? <laughs> now, Tay is a consummate professional, okay? He's one of the most professional guys I know, especially today. But back then, holy shit. This guy was not just five, 10 minutes late. He was literally 30, 40 minutes oh. late in my car, had my legs up, and I was not just sweating, I was profusely mad, fuming, because this guy was wasting my time day in and day out. So I had to literally call this guy before I even left my house. I live about 30 minutes away to tell him I'm downstairs waiting, because that's how long that it would I know it would take for this guy to actually get downstairs. <laughs> literally, this guy just didn't care about your time. And literally, like he said, and what pissed me off is that guys like Nate, especially when he was that young, was he was so freakishly athletic. And this guy was just an amazing athlete that I had to freaking work just 10 times hard just to keep up with him. Right, so when this guy is wasting my time downstairs, I'm like, yo, this guy's then gonna walk to practice, undo his bag, like freaking take off his flip flops, and then just go run routes and he'd be fine. I gotta go to practice, I gotta foam roll, I gotta stretch, I gotta do my laps, I gotta do all this shit, psych myself up, get ready, right? That's the kind of guy I am to make sure I have a good practice. And this guy rolls out, I'm, I'm late, we're freaking getting benched for the first quarter, because it's this guy's fault, right? Oh, so, yes, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> And yeah, sure I remember I'm that. Picking, I'm never picking up this guy again. <laughs> this guy's getting me benched for the first quarter. And we're spending 500 bucks to play back then. <laughs> well, that, I forgot. Like, three touchdowns. <laughs> Bro, I totally forgot about getting benched. Uh, and I, I don't think I, I learned my lesson after that. But honestly, that was some of the best football we've ever played. But, yo, you're just talking about, you know, your mentality, you know, having to have everything regimented. Has that, you think that's helped your in your business? Because, you know, your business has taken off. Like, you guys don't know, Shay has got over 400,000 followers. He's created a Pep Nation community where, you know, people are sending him videos, sending him instructions, doing everything online. So has that helped your, your business, you know, just being the way you are? I think, you know, football and sports has really correlated and, and transferred into my everyday life, especially when it comes to my business. We have thousands upon thousands of athletes all around the world and i try to be a mentor i try to be a, a a spark of guidance for these athletes because i know exactly what they need to do and i know how to do it especially from an athlete like, like myself that strived his whole life to get to where he was but then got cut a lot of people don't know i, got, I was cut three times in the cfl before i started my business but i had made it to that point and i pushed and you know persevered through a lot of you know you know different things in the cfl you know highs and lows and so you know my mindset was cured in those moments in those you know hard moments and i want to make sure that i give back to athletes especially young athletes that had those dreams and aspirations and goals to get there and so i was cured with a killer mindset that mama mentality you know to strike when it's hot to really pursue what you want to pursue in the moments to live in the moment and push and i think through all the times that we shared together, all the times I shared in the CFL as a coach, as a player, you know, as someone that was just, you know, being a mentor, I know exactly what it takes. And I know that's a killer's mindset. And you can't be nowadays, you know, you got kids that are, you know, getting um, ribbons for a hundredth place, right? Yeah. We got to make sure as a culture, you know, as a community, we are making sure that these athletes are developed for life. And I yeah. think that sports does that. And if you aren't ready, life's gonna kick you in the butt. And it's, and, and it's gonna kick you hard, and especially during COVID time. Yeah. Man, you right now, I've been building this business, right? 
and we ain't we ain't even at the gym anymore. But I'm revamping, I'm reformulating, I'm you know doing everything I can to continue at a high level. So when we're finished, COVID, man, mm-hmm. I'm gonna be better off. I'm gonna be further ahead than every single person in the game. If you don't have that mentality, if you don't have that mindset, you aren't going anywhere. I guarantee it. And that's that's probably one of my favorite things about you, man. You will take a little peanut man and grow that thing into a peanut tree bro like you are you are unbelievable you, you use your resources you know you always tell me the, the you know, that saying you know just pour gasoline on the fire you know there's a little fire pour gasoline pour diesel <laughs> pour propane on that thing and, and and grow it so that's always i know that's always your mentality um talking about kids bro like what do you think of this new um kind of kind of mentality of parents where they're specializing their kids all year round in one sport. Cause I know you, when you were a kid, you played a bunch of sports. I played a bunch of sports. The best athletes I know all played a bunch of sports. But nowadays, man, it's kind of switched where parents are specializing their kids in, in, in a one sport all year round. I think it's ruining kids. What do you, what do you think about that? I think you have to diversify, especially at a young age. You gotta do multiple things. You gotta build coordination, speed. That's where athleticism comes from, right? The reason why I was such a great defensive back is because I played basketball. I ran track and field. Those those skills translated to me, you know, working and being a great defensive back. Lateral yeah. change of direction. You know, you know, taking the charge. What do you think you have to do against a wide receiver? You got to get in his face. You got to cut him off, right? You got to be able to turn and run and sprint and run those fly routes. I learned those things by playing multiple sports. And I think if you're a, a parent, you're going to detriment your athletes by putting them into a, an environment that's only conducive to one sport. You can also have a lot of um, injuries because you're not um, you know, working on different uh, uh, muscle imbalances as you would in other sports. You, know, you learn different things. You learn different team games. There's so many different things that parents need to know. But when you get to maybe 13, 14, 15, then yeah, yeah that's when you have to start to look at, you know, what am I actually gonna do? And what I need to invest more time in to get to that goal. Like we know we were gonna play football. So we spent yeah. more time playing summer football and high school football. We weren't gonna play basketball in the summer because it just wasn't, we weren't gonna do that. So right. you have to play at a young age. You gotta, you gotta diversify yourself because then also you're gonna know exactly what you're good at and what you're not good at. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. Like I, I always think about like where I would be if I didn't play a bunch of sports and even just building that the, the, the fundamentals of each sport, like learn, like if you play baseball, you learn hand-eye coordination, you play soccer, you learn to play with your feet and footwork. Just all these sports have all these different benefits that you get it. And I, I'm thankful that my parents put me in a bunch of stuff. But I, when I, I just cringe, man, when I see kids like specializing in one sport, I'm like, man, like you're, you're just, you're not, first of all, you're not gonna be good. Um, and second of all, you, you're probably gonna get hurt all the time. But, you know, you, you were talking about before uh, how, you know, COVID obviously has hit a lot of businesses. Um, what's what's the new normal for you, uh, you know, personal personal life and, and business wise during during COVID? Because I know you're a positive guy. You you will take any situation and turn it into the best situation all the time. So, what well, what's been the new uh, normal for you in terms of business wise and and, and family life? You know, for myself and, and you know, this is just for me. COVID has been a blessing for me personally. And I'm, and I'm not dismissing people that are getting sick and dying or anything like that, but for myself, being home and just being with the family, I hadn't had that opportunity to really be with my family for a really long time. It's not that I'm not here every day, is that I'm literally um, just not present. So, you know, and I had, and I work a lot of hours, right? So I'm gone at six in the morning, right? Stress, you know, pro strength coach out with the pro team. Then I got my own gym that I, you know, I'm with my athletes there all day. So I'm never home. So I haven't really seen my youngest son, which is turning two, really get to grow up. I really didn't get to, you know, get to spend a lot of bonding time with him. So being home now has really allowed me to appreciate family, family time, and, and build on some more relationships with my, you know, both my sons and my wife. And then, you know, from a standpoint, it's like, I was ready for COVID. You know, nobody's really ready, but we built our business, um, you know, multiple revenue streams. And I always talk about this with, you know, up, up, up and coming trainers, entrepreneurs, don't just have all your eggs in one basket. So we had built the gym. We had a nice, you know, um, you know, community atmosphere where all the athletes came, but I know that wasn't enough. So many years ago, I developed our speed and, uh, speed and agility training line where that sells all around the world. We have, you know, amazing athletes using that and we also have our online base and we built that 
you know, two, three years ago, just in case anything ever happened, we got two, three, four incomes coming in, right? To make sure that if one goes out, you know, we're just gonna, you know, pour gasoline on the other, build that one up. So when COVID happened, boom, big spark, you know, we have, we're, we're, we're selling more equipment because nobody can buy equipment anywhere. Amazon, right. you can't, you can't get anything, it's back order or, you know, it's sold out. And we have plenty of stock, we're always ready to go for our athletes. Online programming, that's where everybody's going right now, you know, because they can't train at the gym. So we're, you know, we're one of the main hubs for athletic performance when it comes to online training. So you have to have these, you know, revenue streams ready to go at all times. So if you're an athlete, uh, no, sorry, if you're a trainer or a coach, you know, right now is the opportunities to start building that infrastructure because you never know when it's going to happen again. And when you're finished, now you have a couple more in, uh, uh, revenues, you know, to start working from. That's amazing, bro. Um, you're talking about business wise, like what <laughs> is the biggest, like you gave a, some great pieces of advice right there, but for someone just starting out, uh, what is the biggest thing that uh, you kind of look towards and be like, okay, I know I'm gonna make it. Like, what was the milestone that you hit and you you were just like, okay, this business is for me. Like, I am I am fully immersed in it. I, I know from this point on, there's nothing gonna hold me back. So what was, I wanna know, what was the moment that you're like, this is this is what I can, this is what I'm gonna do for the rest of my life. This is, this is it for me. So I knew that this was for me when I didn't care uh, if I was making money or not. And, and I was having fun and it was passionate and it was something that I could wake up to every single morning. And I know that I was making a difference uh, in people's lives and we were having a great time doing it. So if you are waking up and you're miserable and you don't like what you're doing, but you're still making a lot of money, it's probably not for you. But literally I started this and, and, and you know this, you were in the basement. I started this in my basement, three, 400 square feet that basement was next to no equipment and just a dream and, and, and an aspiration to be great. And I have guys like you and have other athletes come down there to support and help and you know uh, build the business and build the brand and it only took just a few athletes to come down there they got results they were my walking resume and when they started to get results more kids started to come more people started talking more teams started to show up more people want to train like that and when you have that energy and that charisma and that and that character and you're a good person and you have drive and you have ambition and you just have and, and, and thing is, I know the end goal, and I'm still not at the end, but I know what the end goal looks like. And when mm -hmm. you know what it's supposed to look like, you know the steps in order to get there. And the steps might not be straight ahead. They, they might, some might be broken. You might have to climb over another one. You might have to take one down, right? But you, if, you know, if you know the end goal, you just will know how to get there. And I knew how to get there. And that's why I, I, I think we built some success. And that's why I'm so passionate and I love doing it. Who has been like one of the coolest person that's shown interest in your work that you're like, oh my God, this is, this is, I know I'm on the right track. Cause you've got like some high, high, some of the best athletes the world has ever seen, you know, kind of look at you, your work and, and be intrigued. Like guys like Ronaldo, Antonio Brown, uh, Luke Wilson, Chad Owens, the great Chad Owens in the CFL, uh, the Griffin brothers on Seattle um, and, and a host of other guys. Like who was the one guy you can, you can look at and be like, okay, like this person's showing interest. I know I'm on the right track. I know uh, I'm doing the right things. I know this is gonna, this is this is very, very gonna be very successful. Who's the one guy that's kind of caught your eye? Guy, I'm gonna tell you straight up. The one guy, when I knew that he knew that this was an amazing business. And me? What was, was where we were going places. When the Tay, the real deal, <laughs> when this guy showed up at my basement, Right and started training. When he started doing my track training with me, I know if this guy's in, everybody's in. Okay. So when you were there and you were pushing with me, I knew I was gonna be successful, my man. But you know what? I've been fortunate enough that you know we've gotten DMs and we get videos and we get testimonials from you know some of the most amazing athletes in the world. And it's because, and I wouldn't even say it's because you know we have the most e elaborate, innovative training system. I think it's just the culture and the energy and the enthusiasm and the passion that myself and all the other people bring to our page and around the world. And when you can build that kind of culture and people that have like-minded mindset to be positive and to push each other towards greatness, I think that's when you start to make gains. And when, when, when I have those athletes come and I say, oh, you're the best program ever. They say, I'm gonna, I just love what you guys are cultivating here. And so you guys got Ronaldo, and you know guys like Chad, the flying Hawaiian Owens, and all these amazing athletes that 
have have reached out and and, and it's an honor and, and that allows me to you know spark spark more energy into helping more people yeah that's that's crazy and so like if you're in the if you're training people and, and a guy like chad uh you know mop or Cristiano ronaldo hits you up or antonio brown hits you up does, does that change like does that does, does that feeling is that feeling different than when like say like a high school kid hits you up and be like okay yo i want to work like well what's what's the feeling when you know both those groups kind of hit you up or or is this, you just like working with people like what is it well, I'm going to tell you this, and if anybody's, you know, uh, going to tell you a different story, they're probably lying. At first, it's exciting, man. It's like it's like all that hard work, you know, everything that you're putting together, you know, all those late nights of, you know, cultivating and, and, and innovating brand new workout training regimens. They're working, and, and people are seeing it, and you're excited, and, it's, and somebody's calling you out and saying they love it, right? And so, yeah, when those guys reach out, man, you just, you know, you have a big smile on your face, and you know you're doing something right. But over time, you just know that those are just regular people, too. And the most, you know, the most success I've had is with the people right beside me, right next door to me, the people in my neighborhood, the people that are relying on me, uh, you know, the parents and the athletes that want to get better locally. And, you know, now I've kind of differentiated because I've gone through those times of, you know, you know, really good success and people seeing it. And, and um, you know, being a college strength coach and being a pro strength coach, I've seen a lot and I've been so many different places around the world. And now it's kind of become normal, but at but at the beginning, it's it's not normal because those are the things that you aspire. Everybody wants to be training pro athletes, mm -hmm. but you know, it, but it's very difficult to train pro athletes. It's it's not the norm. Most people train at a good life and they train just regular people. So the, when I started out, and I was just training regular athletes, regular people, right? Um, you, you know, when you start to get that first pro athlete, you're so excited and it's a good thing. And I think when that happens to somebody, you should be excited and, and it's okay to, you know, to, to, to have that, you know, moment. But, you know, as you start to, um, you know, step up into your game and more people come throughout the years, it starts to become normal. And, you know, that, that five-year-old athlete that walks in the door, or if you have an Atea J, right, <laughs> they both mean the same to you. Because at the end of the day, you want to get them better. You want to have them prolong their career. And you just want the, them to have that mindset, you know, that they can do anything. And it doesn't matter yeah, what age yeah. is it. For sure. And then the next thing I gotta ask is well, what's more satisfying to have a guy start with you from scratch, like a Keenan Schaefer Baker from there would be what, 13, 14 years old, or to have a pro guy like Chad Owens who, you know, you, you help, you know, maybe prolong his career or get him back to his MOP, um, you know, stature. Well, what's more satisfying when you can, you know, mold a guy kind of from scratch or, you know, help a, a professional kind of, you know, keep uh, his form or, you know, even get better? I think it's molding the young athletes to success. Now, I, I always say that, you know, those athletes that become successful, you know, athletically, you know, those guys are gifted. They're genetically gifted like Kean. You know, he's been working with me for a long time. People don't know he's a wide receiver at the University of Guelph. He just got drafted in the CFL draft, the 2020 draft, uh, to the uh, Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Unbelievable athlete. Now, he was going to do that with or without me. Now, I believe it's more the mental component. Now, you know, um, you know, athleticism isn't, well, being an athlete just isn't about genetics and athleticism. Isn't. It's all about, you know, the mindset. It's about recovery. It's about nutrition. There's a whole spectrum. And I think, you know, what, what I love with young athletes, what I talked about before, is showing them my mistakes or, or my, you know, my gains and my successes and helping them, you know, either make those successes or, you know, not make those mistakes and, and helping them from a young age. And that's more satisfying and seeing those end results, um, no matter where they go. Because a lot of, because you know this, only 1% of the population is going to become a professional athlete. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, you know, we're going to work with thousands upon thousands of athletes and maybe only a couple of those kids, 10 of those kids are going to make it right. But we want to make sure all thousands of those athletes, they're all going to have an opportunity to do amazing things in life. Right. So we got to instill the mindset. So I have, I have kids now that I was training in high school that, you know, they're becoming lawyers, doctors, mm -hmm. teachers, right. We got engineers, so, so many, they're doing amazing things. And they're, and they're calling me back saying, hey, Shay, I had such an amazing time, you know, with you back in the basement or back in the gym. Man, I can't wait to have my kids train with you 15 years. Right, you know right. what I mean? So that's the type of relationship that I like to build and I like to see out. Yeah, no, that's, 
That's that's incredible, bro. Because that's that's the, literally the dream. You know, you talk about doing something for the love of the game, and you're literally doing this for the love of it. I know, obviously, money isn't your biggest motivating factor, and when you take money out of it, like me and you, we both would play football for free. Like I talk about it all the time. I love the game so much, I play for free. So that drives my work ethic because I would do it for free. So I'm not counting how much money I'm making. I'm doing it because I love it. I love competing. I love being good. I love you know making a difference. So you know i'm when i'm working out i don't care you know what 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 the money situation is looking like i'm doing it because it's straight from the love and sure with your business right now you're doing it from the love and that's why good things uh continues to happen but you know this show we like to be funny uh i want you to share uh you know a funny parent moment like a, a kid that came in and his, his maybe his parent was like oh my kid's going to the nfl and then i don't know what what he did or not but I just want you to share a funny uh, parent story on our show for our viewers. Man, so I get thousands of parents a year that come in and they think that their their son or daughter is the next, you know, unbelievable athlete that's that's going to be, you know, worldwide superstar. And they're telling me all these stories about them. And then we haven't even hit we haven't even hit the turf yet. They're like, oh yeah, number one on their team, yeah. number one in yeah. Canada. You know, all 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 this crap. And then next thing I know, they go tie their, you know, they got their shoes on, they got the, you know, whatever it is. They go onto the turf, and this kid came and skipped down the turf. You know, they 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 can't even run. And I'm sitting there, looking at, and and the parents just look at me like, oh yeah, he he just needs to work on a few things. He's a little nervous. I'm sitting, I'm sitting there going, bro, this kid's freaking 16 years old. What do you mean he can't skip? He can't run. He can't do a push up. He can't do a pull up. Man, we got a world. I, I'm sitting there going like, you you only wanted 10 sessions? Man, we're gonna have to sign you up for the 100 session package immediately. Okay, I'm gonna give you an amazing discount today. Okay, we're gonna give you a $20,000 discount. Sign him up for a lifetime. Okay, like, man, like they just come in here with expectations that yeah. like you know their kids the end all be all, and I gotta break it to them sometimes. I'm like, you know what? You know they're good but they're not great and they need some work. <laughs> <laughs> bro, that's hilarious, man. I, I can just imagine because, bro, every, I you know, you, you're a parent, I'm a parent. Everybody thinks they're the, their, their kids like the funniest or the strongest or the, you know, the coolest. And, and it's just, it's just human nature, but I love hearing the, the parent stories because I'll probably be one of those parents and a trainer with, in the future is probably going to sit me down and be like, hey man, hey, your, your girl's just not like good <laughs> if that time I would, comes. I would, be, I would be realistic with my son. I've already been listening to you. I'll you have to, listening. or you set them up for failure, man. <laughs> I, I will not do that, especially now that I see it, right? I know exactly yeah, yeah. how to train my son and what to do, not, not to do with him. Yeah, no, 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 seriously, that, that's that's the best way to be. I remember, you know, funny story, I remember I, I told my mom that I want to be in the NBA, and this was, I was probably like six or seven, and she's like, you like, you know what, I, that's a great goal, but I don't think you're gonna be tall enough. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm, I can dribble, I can run around people. Like I, I can do it. She's like, ah, you know, I, I just don't think you, she knows, cause obviously she knows our genetics. She's like, I don't think you're gonna be tall enough. And then, you know, I was obviously mad in the moment. I'm like, my mom doesn't believe me, or whatever. And and then later on, like, as I got older, I'm like, mom, I think you're right. I'm, I'm not gonna be right, uh, tall enough. So that is really the best way to be, man. Like you gotta be realistic, not you know, realistic to the point where if your son or daughter is trying to be um, in the NBA and no one in your family is over 5'8", that might be an unrealistic goal because now, you just know now, the how, now, if he wants, If his heart is set and going to the NBA, <laughs> man, you know what? As a parent, I don't want to say, hey, I'm not going to tell him, hey, you're not going to go. I'm going to say, hey, I'll be realistic. The chances aren't that you're going to go. Hey, I will help you tremendously yeah. to get there. Because you know it, it's it's our duty to say, hey, this is what they want. And if they're waking up day after day and that's their passion and they're showing me that they're fully invested in it, yeah, I'll sign you up for the basketball camps. You can play basketball. And then when you're 19 and you realize that maybe you weren't going to do it, at least I can tell you, hey, you pushed it and you gave everything you got because I want to instill that type of work ethic in my in my 100%. kids. That, that if you want something, go out and don't tell, any, don't tell yourself you can't do it. Don't listen to anybody. And we'll give you all the tools and resources that you can, you can get to get there. And if it doesn't work out, at least at the end of the day, you can say that I gave it everything I, I, I have. And you have, and, and you learned something along the way. So now that can set you up for something else. 
A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And I think she, she just at the time I was playing soccer a lot, and she just wanted me to keep playing soccer and and not go the basketball route. But you know, she she was keeping it real from 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 the jump, bro. So you've been you've been even a CFL player and a guy on the staff, man. What which one of those roles was was more rewarding? Like seeing see winning as a player or winning as you know a member of the you know coaching training staff. Uh, I'll tell you this. I am, I am thoroughly, and, I, and, and I'm convinced, I'm just jinxing the CFL. And people don't know my story, okay? I was drafted, okay, 2012. And I got cut from the Toronto Argonauts. I went to training camp, got cut, got sent back to school. Those son of a guns won the Grey Cup in 2012, <laughs> okay? And I was pissed off. I'm like, you know what, man? I could, at least I could have tried to make the damn practice squad and got Good. myself a ring with those guys, right? And I ended up going to um, Edmonton for a couple of years after. And, um, and that experience was great. I enjoyed it. I loved it. But the guy in um, Toronto, I won't even mention his name, but the guy in Toronto that was the defensive coordinator, he didn't like me. One of the reasons why I got cut. He then becomes, so I'm thinking when I'm in Edmonton, I'm about to start, I'm about to have an opportunity to really push towards a starting job. He comes to Edmonton, boom. First week of training camp, he cuts me. Uh, Damn it, a year later, Edmonton wins the Great Cup. <laughs> I, I, go, I, go to Winni I go to Winnipeg that same year. Winnipeg's, I think at the time, like eight and two. They're unbelievable. Yeah. I go to Winnipeg and I'm on the PR. I maybe go up once um, at the end of the year, but th they end up, when I got there, I was there for the last about seven weeks, they went 0 and 7 or whatever it was. They didn't <laughs> win another game. Yeah, I'm like, yo, what the hell's going on? <laughs> okay. And then, so then that was the last year I was with the uh, Winnipeg. They did so bad, they just regrouped and, you know, uh, got a whole brand new team. So that was my last stint in the CFL. Then I get a head. Uh, um, a position strength uh, strength coach for the Toronto Argonauts. Okay, I'm excited. You know, man, I'm ready to go. And you know, I'm implementing all these plans. You know, we're healthy all year, but damn it, we only win four games. Like, <laughs> how many, bro? And then watch. Like, I don't know what's gonna happen, but because I don't know if I have a CFL this season, but how the heck do I get put in these positions where everywhere I go, so it might just be me that I'm losing. <laughs> but yet, the year before I go to college, we almost won a championship. Uh, you know, uh, you know, college football, you know, we almost win. Man, like, I'm in these great atmospheres, but anything in the pro pro realm, I'm not good. You know, things don't <laughs> happen my way. So anyway, that's not my rant on that. But what do I like better? Do it, um, did I like being a professional player or do I like being a professional coach? And I'm gonna tell you this, there's nothing like being a professional player. There's um, it's just the camaraderie. I always go back to this, right? It's a special time in your life. That's what you're working towards. I was never working towards becoming a professional strength head head coach, mm -hmm. right? A, a head coaching job. I just got called one day and I, and I accepted the job and, you know, because I love it. I, but um, I worked my whole life to become a pro athlete. And so to get in that locker room, only a select few get to go in there. So there's, a, you know, there's jokes, there's there's good times. You know, you know this, man. Like, yeah. you, know, you bond with your friends, that you meet new people around the world. There's just things that most people get to never see or get the opportunity. And it's just a great, great time uh, in my life for those three years. And I wouldn't change it for the world. Um, and uh, I just had a great time. You know, as a strength coach, you know, it, it, it's different. You see, I already know what the athletes are going through because I was sat in their shoes. But now I can see it from, from a coach's perspective. And I can see things that, you know, you know, things that are good, things that are bad. And I get to learn a lot of different things about athletes. And so it was a really good experience, right? And it's a good opportunity to see it from a different perspective. A hundred percent. And, you know, few people get to see that kind of from both sides. Cause I don't, I don't know for me personally, I, I'm going to be a player, but I don't think I'll ever be a coach. Just as speaking right now, I don't know. I, I just kind of like the media side a little bit more, but very few people can see it from both sides and have the, the kind of perspective that you have but uh, we were talking about uh, basketball earlier, and my would you rather question this week uh, is, would you rather train 1998 Dennis Rodman or Al Naverson? And a lot of people don't know Al Naverson, NBA great, Hall of Famer. He famously said this week that he never lifted weights. They were too heavy. So who would you rather train, Dennis Rodman or Al Naverson? Now I'll tell you this, both of them, are just dogs they both have that killer mindset that you know that uh, ability to rise to the moments either Allen Iverson as a uh, league MVP you know scoring champ uh, underdog he's only six foot six foot and he's just demolishing everybody around him where you got a guy like Dennis, Dennis Drummond and you've seen on the last dance this guy literally started playing basketball in college 
and just became a beast because of his work ethic. Yeah. And I think they both have amazing uh, tangibles. But you know what? I'm going to go with Allen Iverson because I grew up. He was one of my favorite players. And I think just, you know, his drive and his will to win and not having, the, you know, the right people around him at the right time to win a championship. Um, you know, I just like his tenacity and, and his relentless drive for the game. And, you know, people might say this and that about him, but the guy was just, he, he was unreal, man. So if, if you guys want to dig a little bit deeper into Allen Iverson, go check him out. He might not test the weight. He might not have been the first guy at practice and all the things that I harp upon. But the guy, one thing you can't teach is a killer mindset, the mama mentality, you know, to get up and, and, and go work. And no matter where you are, you're the guy that's going to lead, uh, you know, take the last shot. Not a lot of people want that, right? Yeah. You, can, you can work your whole ass off. I mean, I mean, your whole life off. Uh, for success, but you might be scared in those big moments, right? Yeah. Because because mentally up here, you know, you haven't cured that, you ha you haven't perfected that, and I think guys like that, especially what he went through at a young age, um, you know, almost never even playing sports again and going to prison. I think if you look into that story, you'll know that that guy was an unbelievable athlete. Football, he was the Mike Vick before Mike Vick. And people don't know that. Like this guy was literally doing huge things in in in, in the realm of sports. So I, I would I would love the, the, to train him, man, or you know get to know him better. Yeah. So you wouldn't you wouldn't even be scared that you know you get in there and he wouldn't want to do anything. I think it's that opportunity to uh, to push him towards something that maybe he didn't enjoy. And 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 then how can I you know put that on myself? And, uh, you know, to get somebody like that to do stuff. And, you know, I, and I learned that this year. And I'm not throwing anybody under the bus in the CFL. But, you know, when you get to the pro level, you meet people that um, are very successful. Uh, and, and, and then you meet people that are successful in different ways. Meaning, like, I, I was working with guys that, that never lifted a weight, right? That were working on their God-given abilities as a pro athlete. And I'm sitting there going, like, wow, this guy is really that good? And I don't really even see him that much training. Like, wow. Yo, that was going to be another one of my questions right there. You know what I mean? Like, and, but then I see guys that are in their, like, dogs every day getting the same results. So, like, I, like, I literally take a lot of data and statistics. And, and I'm just trying to figure out what makes these guys that don't do as much as the other guys, you know, so successful. And, and, and to this day, it's still hard to figure that out. But at the end of the day, it just goes back to, you know, their environment growing up, their mindset, their mentality, you know, all that kind of stuff. Because at the end of the day, some of these guys are just working on God-given abilities. And you've yeah. seen that, right? At the NFL, NBA, NHL, everybody has those guys that just don't do as much work, but get 10 times the better results than the guys that do. Yeah, like my whole life, bro, I've seen that. And I always, it's always been the age old question, right? Like, is it worth it to train when this guy could just go and, and do the same things you're doing without even putting in half the work? But those guys are, you know, I'd say like one in a million. Like I've seen it at all levels, you know, even in the, with the Eskimos, like famously, you know, my boy Adarius Bowman, the guy was a freak of nature, but you know, he, he tried to lift weights for like about a week and he got, he literally got too big. So like his body just responds like uh, on a different level to weight training. And, you know, it didn't affect him on the field because that guy was a, was a freak of nature. Even a guy like Mike Riley, like in off season, the guy goes crazy, you know, lifts, lifts, you know, works out hard, but in season doesn't touch a weight and he's a warrior, man. So uh, I'll see some guys it doesn't affect, but some guys need that training. Like I'm, the, I'm one of the guys that I need to be training because you know, just a little bit of slip up, I feel like I'm falling off, right? So everybody's different, but it's just interesting to see. And what I was really gonna ask you was like, I wanna know a guy that was in the gym with you or you've seen training and you, in your head, you're like, there's no way this guy's gonna be good. There's no way this guy has, you know, anything to him. But then he gets on the field and he's like, he's balling. He's you're like, how is this happening? Like, have you ever witnessed a guy like that? Man, I don't know, like, I, I, I'm trying to think, of, right? I don't want to say anybody's name and then just be like, like <laughs> just I don't, say it, man. Like, I don't, because I don't know, like, I can't remember, like, me looking at someone and be like, man, this guy looks like dog shit. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> and all of a sudden he goes on to the field. So that's a hard one. I'm going to have to, I'm going to, have to think about that. We'll come right, back right. to that question. Cause you're you're, you're going to have you. Yeah, we're going to have you back on the show very soon because this has been a lot of fun. But and then we're going to make you answer that question. But one of the, uh, another, you know, we like to have fun on this show. So, Another non-sports question I have to ask you, bro, and I'll share mine after. 
is I want to know like a funny time or just a, a time when when your card got declined because you're big time now. You know, you're one the best trainers in the world, and and obviously I'm trying to humble you a little bit. But like, what's a what's a funny time that you're you know you had your credit card you're going to buy something got declined. Gets, um, my credit card gets declined goddamn every day. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I'm going to tell you something. Okay, just a funny story that actually happened a few days ago. So I went to go use my credit card. Okay. Uh, actually, my wife used my damn credit card every, uh, almost every day on Amazon. So, yeah, and I know that all the wives out there that are listening yes. or anybody out there or husbands, your wife is using your credit card. All, <laughs> actually, you know what? It's our credit card, but it's being used on Amazon yeah. about six to 10 times a day, right? So I go on and I check my bank statements and I'm like, who the heck spent, you know, $1,500 at this, not not Bell, but Dell, D-E-L-L. Yeah. This is a fraud. This is a fraudulent, you know, thing I'm talking about right now. So if you were a, a fraud to this shit, you, you know, you're gonna be laughing about this. So I'm looking at it, I'm like, yo, like, I don't even remember this computer coming in. Like, man, like, so I'm, I'm asking my wife, yo, where's, your, where's this brand new laptop? Like, you know, brand new computer. She tell me she didn't buy nothing. So I, I'm, I'm I'm making a call because now my credit cards ain't working. Shit, no, nothing's working because I can't get through, right? So I, and I need to use my shit, you know, to make some orders. Um, and so uh, I call in there and they're telling me, yeah, no, you know, you went over here today and you bought, I'm like, bro, what, how, how can I go anywhere? Freaking. Uh, it's COVID-19. I can't yeah. even go into yeah. a damn store. How right. the heck am I supposed to buy a computer and laptop at the store? They're like, oh, yeah, I know. You're, you went in there today. You bought it. I'm like, no, I didn't. Give me my damn money back and set up my freaking credit card. So it took me freaking two days to get my credit card back running again. They had to send me a new one. All this shit, right? But anyway, that's my rant about that. <laughs> my credit card, because I guess we buy so much shit on Amazon, yeah. people are, can take my freaking card. Mm. Got my card number. Yeah, no, honestly, like you're talking about, you know, the whys and stuff, but like there have been a few times, embarrassing times where like I'm an adult and I'm with other people like teammates and Melody will, you know, buy something and not tell me in time because I'd be going to use my card and we obviously have a limit. So we're close to the limit and, you know, she's obviously bought something and she just hasn't told me yet that she bought some. So I'm unaware. I'm going to go use my card like nothing is nothing's wrong. And. You know, I'm around teammates and you know, it's like, oh man, I'll get you, I'll get you lunch, man. It's no worries, I'll get your dinner. And then, lunch, then, first of all, I don't know about that, if I believe this story. <laughs> hey man, times <laughs> have changed, man. You still owe me a lunch. <laughs> <laughs> remember, <laughs> out, remember, <laughs> out, remember <laughs> out, you know, and, and on road trips and stuff, I'd be like, hey, you know, I see you know, a younger guy, I'm like, man, I'll get your lunch, I'll get your dinner, <laughs> whatever. So I go to get, a, you know, a younger guy's lunch or dinner and my car declines and they're looking at me like, what? You're supposed to have money here. You're a veteran in this league and your car is declining. And I'm I have to look at him like, yo, man, I don't know what's going on. Like, I gotta, I gotta act like, you know, this is, you know, let me try another card or let me, you know, let me call my bank. Like something's going on. This could never happen. But yeah, that's, that's one of the, one of the, like you sparked that story. Cause I, I hadn't thought about that for a while, but in college, man, bro, you know, you're trying to impress girls, you know, you're trying to, you know, go out on dates and sometimes girls will be like, hey, no, I don't want to go out. And you're promising them everything under the sun. I'm like, and I'll take you out, I'll, you know, we'll go to, you know, we'll go to dinner, we'll go to movie, and then maybe we'll go bowling after, you know, three course, uh, three phase night, man. And, and well, I remember one of the times, man, this girl it took me forever to, you know, get a chance to take her out. And I finally get through and promise her a three phase night, you know, you know, dinner, movies, and, you know, activity. Next thing you know, man, we didn't even make it through dinner, man. Like dinner, dinner wasn't even on the table. My car gets declined at dinner we couldn't make it past dinner man never never seen her since man so that's that's my car decline <laughs> <worry, man. laughs> you know it happens man it happens to the best of us so that's something i'm going to start doing i'm gonna start asking every everybody that comes on the show um about their funny story because you know we're human too man hey man if you gotta get yourself a new car man and up, some, <laughs> up, up, up that limit a little bit I just gotta give myself more money, huh? <laughs> money. I, I don't know. COVID nineteen. You might be able to get a couple loans from the government right now. <laughs> right, right. But, but Shay, my boy, bro. I feel like we could talk forever. This was man. This was so fun. Yo, I I gotta have you on again because I I have so much more I want to get get touch on with you. 
Uh, you're hey, doing great you, things. What do you got a timer over there? What are you doing? Man? No, I don't got a timer. I'm just saying, man. This is you, you can go forever, but what this is for the, the people. The driving the Windsor right now from Toronto. He's got another hour and a half, man. You, <laughs> you gotta give you gotta give this guy a little bit more. Hey, man, we can't give him everything on the first day, man. Damn, bro, you can I got more. I got more, and more, and more, buddy. I can go for about ten years. <laughs> we can't, hey, man. That's why you're my best friend. Man. Children you're, is waking up. His wife's calling him over here. <laughs> He's got a he's a, he's got a curfew on the uh, podcast over here, people. It only goes. He, we're on Zoom right now, uh, recording this. He didn't upgrade his Zoom account. This is one of the problems with his credit card. So My card, man. Limit. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, this guy yeah, I can't afford it anymore. <laughs> can't record anymore. Uh, hey, hey, but no, for real, shit, man. Thank you so much for doing this, man. You're like I tell you, when you're one of my best friends. You keep it real, a hundred percent of the time, and one of the hardest working people I know, man. Like seriously, like to see where you come from, and it's no surprise to me because whenever you do, you put a hundred percent of your energy and effort into it, and bro, it's it's no surprise. I'm so proud of you, bro. Um, you, you don't even know how much how proud I am of you, and I know it's just sky's the limit for you from here. So, but man, it was super fun today, bro. Uh, I gotta I have you on again. Man. Thank you so much for doing this, brother. Yeah, thank you for having me on the All Ball pod, uh, Podcast. I really appreciate your time. Um, you know, I don't do this for everybody. I want my I want the money in my bank account so I can clear some of those credit cards hey, immediately. Man, my okay? my credit card, the way it's set up right now, bro. I don't know if you're getting. Oh, you better get that shit set up immediately, right? So. I, I, I want that, but all real, man, uh, I'll, I'll leave people with this. Those who say they can and those who say they can't are both usually right. So go out and get this shit done right now, okay? You are who you say you are. Hey, okay? be the best you can be. Hey, be the greatest you can be every second, every day, every rep, every set, okay? So you can go perfect and be the greatest of all time. I want you guys to believe that and just continue to work hard each and every day, guys. God bless. Thank you. Take care. Sayonara. Hey, man, that guy, he really lives that. Like, I'm serious. He really lives those words. And if you're going to listen to anyone, listen to someone that really lives a shape here, everyone. Thank you so much, my brother. Love you, man. Let's go.